This is incredible. I think I have quite a different experience to most people when they visit cities. Everything is to facilitate street photography. I didn't take any photos. I'm just like, this is too incredible. This will never do it justice. You have to, have to, have to go and see it for yourself. Gang, good morning. We are in the second best city in the world, Rome. And I am absolutely over the moon to, to be here. I've been doing a lot of work in Italy recently, and I've finally got the opportunity to come to possibly the second greatest city in the world. So the plan is to go and explore this juicy, juicy sunrise um, by the Forum and the Colosseum, and to just see what we find and to explore and to not really have a plan. Because I think that is the best way to go and explore a new city. As I explored Rome on different days with varying weather conditions, I've decided it's best to group my favourite images and insight at each location together to age with the flow of the video. Let's go explore Rome. Gang, it's moments like these when I am just so gassed <laughs> to be a photographer. This is incredible. I was so lucky to be able to get up and explore the forum by myself before the crowds get out of bed. And in this sequence, my camera is parallel to the floor, which in turn means that our vertical lines are vertical. And our brains interpret these images to feel more realistic because this is how we actually perceive the world, our vertical lines being vertical. Compare that to this upwards tilting shot, where you'll notice that these vertical lines are starting to collapse towards each other. And this makes the building feel taller and with a sense of majesty and grandeur. I still can't quite believe that all of this used to be the epicenter of the world, essentially. And now it's just ruins for us to come and take photos of. And around the forum, there were plenty of people having a great time or distracting others who are trying to have a good time. But the real stars of the show in Rome, as many of you know, are these huge seagulls. They know their best angles, how to get sympathy food, and when a cheeky photographer is getting too close. If you like how I talk about photography, sign up to my waitlist for my digital learning photo book, Street Tools Volume 1. I've got to say, the Colosseum is absolutely incredible, and I couldn't help but keep returning back to the space. As well as soaking in the space myself, I wanted to capture these new gladiators, aka the Italian tour guides, who would defend their group like an absolute lion, yet bulldoze their way straight through another. I loved it. And whilst usually I love shooting on 35mm, perhaps it was a little too tight to really get this scale of the space. But I was able to go further away and to shoot the Colosseum from the outside. I found all of these lime trees in these really cute pots and as you can see there, there's a pattern and so I want to try and place a subject in the gaps hopefully the opposite side to the Colosseum so I can have two interesting subjects across the frame so the viewer can explore the image. Someone just walked there, let's go. I love finding these pockets of light that are popping through different windows so you can get nice silhouettes around here which then creates separation between the subject and the dark background. On the second morning I was wandering around when I saw what I can only describe as my near Steve McCurry experience and this is one of my favourite photos ever. We've got a subject standing there on a Delhi train station platform with his son streaming through the side cutting straight through his newspaper and oh beautiful right? And this was a super overcast day and as I was wandering towards the Colosseum, I saw this guy reading a newspaper. He stops 10 meters in front of me and the sun starts smashing its way through the clouds. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is it. I am going to do it. I'm going to finally take a five star image. I am over the moon. And I race towards him and I snap this shot. And as soon as I do, the clouds cover over. I only got one attempt at doing this and I'm not gonna lie gang. I didn't look at my camera. 
because I was so scared that I had the perfect opportunity and messed it up. And I did. But that is street photography. So, <laughs> gotta just keep moving. But this got me thinking. Controversial opinion about people being on their phones in street photography. And um, what sparked this is that everyone is on their phones, whether they're capturing memories, whether they're talking to someone on FaceTime, whether they are recording YouTube videos, everyone is on their phones. And whilst I think that, yes, I would prefer to shoot people who weren't on their phones, who were doing something else, doing something different. I think that if we give it enough time, if we give it, 40, 50, 100 years <laughs> if we're still alive, we will look back at these images and think, wow, that was such an iconic moment in time where humans really first started going bionic, where we started capturing digital memories and using our phones as a way to really live our lives. So I think that over time, we will start to like these phone pictures slightly more than we do now. So I've found these lines, which are opposite the Basilica. So my plan is to wait for the traffic to stop and for someone to walk in front of me and then snap that as, <laughs> as much and as hard as I can to try and get an interesting subject being led by the lines towards the Basilica. It kind of worked, but I felt like the angle that I needed to move to to use these lines as leading lines was not great. So although the idea was there, Again, as with street photography, it doesn't always work the way that you want it to. So I decided to cut my losses and head inside the Basilica. Hands down, that building is the greatest building that humans will ever build. There, there is no doubt in my mind at all about how incredible that building is. If you haven't been, I didn't even take any photos. I was just like, this is too incredible. This will never do it justice. You have to, have to, have to go and see it for yourself. And I was so confused that there were so many people in the square today until I heard this voice booming all around. With so many people leaving, I wanted to tell the story of an unidentifiable mass of people moving and I thought that the best way to do that was to use a slow shutter. And bear in mind, although I've got a few kind of usable images here, the slower your shutter speed, the lower your hit rate of usable images becomes. So you need to take far, far more images than you think in order to get a few that you can actually use. As I'm sure many of you can relate to, you have different ideas and thoughts that kind of are always circulating in your head, right? And I always think about this frame from this book of drawing compositions in comics. And I love it because it feels like you are in the mind of the character closest to the viewer and they are thinking about the scene behind them. And this image here is a poor execution and composition of that. I probably needed to get a little bit closer and I probably needed something interesting to be happening behind. But this is exciting because this is my first attempt and I'm only gonna get better at this. And it will forever be one of my goals to take a street photo with this framing and this concept. And I feel it deep, deep within me that I will one day shoot an image that absolutely bangs. It is only a matter of time. Castle San Angelo, or Adrian's Tomb for the English, is a striking round building with many different vantage points to shoot and capture its majesty. And there is this classic symmetrical shot, but that's a bit boring, and I found it much more fun to mess around with scale as well as diagonal leading lines. And also because of the crazy footfall on this bridge, I found myself hunting for moments and coincidences. So I've been here for absolutely ages because I'm trying to get someone mimicking some sort of like hand gesture where their hand is up and flat against this statue. So I think that'll be a really nice comparison and quite a nice coincidence. But I've been waiting about 15 minutes and not had a single image come close. So here is what I've shot so far. <laughs> Arguably, one of the best things about Rome is how it changes your perspective because we have got some of the most gorgeous, impressive buildings that have ever been built. There is no skyscraper in the world that comes anywhere near close to how impressive the Colosseum is, for example. And the civilization that built this is now ruined <laughs> and it's completely destroyed. 
and we're kind of trying to piece together roughly what we think happened. And this is such a freeing thought that we don't know any of these people, that at the end of the day, the individual doesn't really matter. And so although I've got goals and ambitions to really grow this YouTube channel, and I've got goals and ambitions for my personal life, my challenges and my pain points aren't actually that big of a deal because when I die, none of it really matters <laughs> anymore. And that to me is so freeing. It relieves so much pressure and all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, if my life doesn't actually have that much meaning, I can then spend my time really doing the things I want to be doing. And that to me is absolutely incredible. I love that. Probably my favorite building is the Pantheon, which is hidden down some unassuming Roman streets. And the temple structure on the outside, whilst it's beautiful, is often obstructed by those who are trying to attach their self-worth to said beauty. However, inside, this is where the real gold is. This place is magic. And to think that it was built 2000 years ago with an intricate understanding of time and space, resulting in this column of light hitting certain points around the room on significant specific dates, blows my mind every time. The structure is made out of Roman concrete and although many of its ornaments and kind of decorative things have been stripped out, you can still tell that it was once by far the coolest building in the world. This place, was absolute chaos. I had no idea where to start trying to capture the whole space. And so I decided that it was gonna be easier if I started focusing on the details. The smaller stories, individuals' moments, moments between couples, moments that are usually overlooked, and funny coincidences. And there were so many stories to be told. There were hardships, releases, teamwork, and individual determination. And to top it off, it would be wrong of me to not shoot NYC inspired street photography using this beautiful backlighting at this crossing. I think my experience of traveling to new cities is very different to most people's because I absolutely prioritize street photography. And that's not to say that you should, but when, when I'm out and about exploring a new city, I'm by myself and I'm making deliberate choices that allow me to spend more time on the street. Whether that's I'm choosing simpler food so I can grab it, go, get out, and I'm not making a big deal of it. I'm not drinking alcohol, I'm not eating ice cream, even though I probably should, um, and a lot of people would disagree with my choices. I think that this allows me to get more reps in, allows me to shoot more photos, to be more creative, and to be doing the thing that I really want to do. And if you're wanting to be more serious about your street photography or just photography in general, it may be worth considering how do you start putting in more more work? How do you start getting the reps in? How do you start prioritizing your bigger goal? And again, that's not to say that everyone should. Absolutely not. A lot of people just find photography is a nice hobby. But if you want to start taking better photos, getting paid for photos, being a top level photographer, which is what my goals are, then yeah, you've got to make some sacrifices somewhere because you can't do it all. I wanted to capture the smaller details of local Romans and their day-to-day -day lives. So I explored tra Travestir for about an hour or so as I drank my morning coffee. They're all play fighting up here. It's interesting trying to shoot the real mundane, to find standout subjects that aren't iconic buildings or performative theatre. But this is where we cut our teeth as photographers, right? We get better at taking photos by pushing ourselves to capture simpler scenes in less than ideal conditions versus shooting banger after banger in beautiful light with easy subjects. No goal is worth pursuing if it's easy. What an absolutely glorious morning. 
The weatherman lied. He said it was going to be cloudy and horrible, but I think that this is the nicest morning that I've had since since being here. But look at that. That is just absolutely gorgeous. So the plan is to get coffee and then make the most of this. I am so grateful to have got up this morning because I was thinking about just staying, just staying in bed. I've been getting up super early these last few days. I was like, no, I'll get up, go out. But that is, that is gold. had a pork bat from this place. Best food I've had all drip. Unreal. There are so many interesting people and weird moments happening all around us all the time. It's too easy when focusing on our to-do list and optimizing our commute to get everywhere as quick as possible to fail to pick up and notice these things. And that's one of the best things about photography. Not only do we slow down to see more, you are able to create reasons to interact with others. There is always something to make a comparison between. Some simple things to enjoy, a coincidence to notice, and a camera allows us to slow down and to take in life.